The fact that scientists can make something that's even hotter than me is a weird sciencey fact that boggles my mind. See, it turns out scientists and engineers are really just like rednecks with an education and better funding. Because they do things like build particle accelerator ion colliders. And all these machines do, all, a little bit of an understatement. They accelerate atoms and particles to nearly the speed of light and then crash them into each other just to see what happens. It's basically just a demolition derby or nitro circus, but with more pocket protectors. Now, while doing that is just, you know, fucking cool and should be reason enough, it also helps us unlock the secrets of the universe. And back in 2010 with the relativistic heavy ion collider in New York, they collided two gold nuclei together. It's just a bare gold atom without all the spinny shit around the outside, the electrons and neutrons or whatever. Anyway, when these collided, it created temperatures upwards of seven trillion degrees Fahrenheit. To put that into perspective, that makes the center of the sun look like a deep freezer. It makes a supernova, you know, the thing that happens when a star explodes, look like Hoth. That's 10 times hotter than the center of a supernova and about 250,000 times hotter than the center of our sun. Not such a hot shot now, are you? Oh, but still very bright. It kind of felt like Donald Trump there for a minute. Anyway, our understanding of what happens when things heat up kind of falls apart at those temperatures. See, as things heat up, they go from solid to liquid to gas. We know this. Water Water goes from ice to water to steam. But once you start to get stuff really hot, like if you heat steam up even more, it starts to fall apart. Particles will split into their individual atoms, and then you get it even hotter, and then their electrons fall off, and that's how you get bare nuclei. And then apparently, if you continue to heat it up to these ridiculous fucking temperatures that haven't existed since microseconds after the Big Bang, you get superfluids, which until now I always thought was, was whiskey. It's not. Anyway, a superfluid is a fluid that defies the laws of physics in the way that I understand them. Basically, it's a fluid with no viscosity, so you can like stir it and it would just spin forever. Fuck friction, I guess. And these superfluids are called quark gluon plasmas, which I'm pretty sure is a name that came directly out of Star Trek fan fiction. Just does not sound very scientific to me. But then again, I am much closer to redneck than I am, you know, scientist or engineer. But like I said, scientists and engineers are just rednecks with better degrees, funding, and hygiene. And as a result, they are competitive. And if you thought the Europeans were going to allow our hot and steamy 7.2 trillion degree record to stand, I mean, after all, they've got topless women on billboards, Amsterdam, and French accents. We have morbid obesity, abortion bans, and Marjorie Taylor Green. They're just hotter than we are. And they set out to prove it at the large Hadron Collider that lies below the border of France and Switzerland. There, they crashed a couple lead nuclei into each other, and the resulting reaction was nearly 10 10 trillion degrees Fahrenheit. That is some Emma Watson hot right there. And what's cool is these reactions can tell us a lot about how the universe was created and the physics that we don't completely understand about it. So I, for one, am excited that engineers are taking demolition derbies to subatomic levels, but the fact that subatomic smashing subsequently sizzles and sears until it shapes itself into a superfluid, well, that is pretty mind-boggling.